So Long, See You Tomorrow stands as the highly acclaimed final novel by American writer and editor William Maxwell. Initially released in two parts in the New Yorker magazine in 1979, the complete book was published the following year and went on to receive the prestigious National Book Award in 1982. Maxwell's influential career included serving as the fiction editor of The New Yorker from 1936 to 1975, where he collaborated closely with renowned authors such as J.D. Salinger, Eudora Welty, Vladimir Nobokov, and John Updike. Drawing inspiration from his own upbringing in Illinois, Maxwell penned six novels and numerous short stories throughout his prolific writing journey. So Long, See You Tomorrow serves as an autobiographical novel set in the author's hometown of Lincoln, Illinois. The narrative delves into Maxwell's personal memories and regrets intertwined with a murder committed by the father of his friend. Exploring themes of family instability's impact on children, father-son communication, and the complex relationship between memory and fiction, the story provides a concise yet profound examination of the art of storytelling itself. The book opens on a winter morning in Lincoln, Illinois, where a tenant farmer named Clarence Smith brutally murders his neighbor, Lloyd Wilson, and disfigures his ear with a razor. Tragically, Clarence is later discovered dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound at the bottom of a gravel pit. The unnamed narrator, haunted by memories of the murder-suicide, has carried the weight of this tragedy throughout his entire life, as he was acquainted with Cletus, the son of the murderer. Tormented by remorse for not reaching out to Cletus at school in the aftermath of his father's suicide, the narrator is determined to seek redemption by writing a memoir, which becomes the very book the reader holds. Initially, the narrator reflects on his own childhood, marked by sorrow when his mother passes away just two days after giving birth to his younger brother. The weight of this loss is compounded by his father's silent anguish, consumed by grief and guilt. Over time, his father gradually emerges from his emotional seclusion and forms a connection with a compassionate younger woman, who eventually becomes the narrator's stepmother. As their new house is being constructed, the family resides in a rented home, embarking on a journey that lays the foundation for the events to come. The narrator finds solace in his daily after-school escapades on the scaffolding at the construction site, where he befriends a new companion named Cletus. Faced with difficulties in connecting with boys at school, the narrator cherishes the meaningful companionship Cletus provides. However, their last evening spent together coincides with the night preceding the tragic murder committed by Clarence. Following a brief period of residing in their newly built house, the narrator's father receives a promotion, prompting the family's relocation to Chicago. One day, while navigating the hallways of his new high school, the narrator catches sight of Cletus approaching. They pass each other in silence, leaving the narrator perplexed as to why he didn't reach out to his friend. Contemplating what he could have done differently, the narrator longs to reconnect with Cletus, realizing that the only place he can find his lost friend is in the past. Driven by a desire to piece together the events leading up to the murder, the narrator embarks on a vivid imaginative journey. Lloyd and Clarence, once inseparable best friends, shared a bond that extended beyond farm work welcoming each other into their respective homes. However, a tumultuous turn of events unfolds when Lloyd becomes consumed by an uncontrollable attraction to Clarence's wife, Fern, and she reciprocates his sentiments. Succumbing to their desires, they engage in a secret love affair, plagued by Lloyd's overwhelming sense of impending disaster and guilt over deceiving Clarence. The repercussions of their actions reverberate through both marriages, causing them to crumble under the weight of the affair. Cletus, sensing that something is amiss, becomes an inadvertent observer, piecing together fragments of information from overheard conversations. The affair's impact becomes apparent when Lloyd's wife, Marie, leaves him, taking their daughters with her. Similarly, Fern abandons Clarence, taking their sons along and initiating divorce proceedings, successfully obtaining custody of the children. Devastated by the loss of his wife, children, and closest friend, Clarence spirals into despair abandoning his farming endeavors and seeking refuge with his parents. Recognizing Fern's fears of Clarence's potential actions, she confides in Lloyd and her lawyer, further complicating an already volatile situation. In the present day, the narrator reflects on the significant changes that have swept through Lincoln. He dreams of a nostalgic past, envisioning the town as it once was during his childhood, with his mother alive and their old house serving as a symbol of comfort and stability. 
The lingering memories of Cletus weigh heavily on the narrator's mind, and he carries a burden of guilt over their silent encounter in the school hallway. The narrator contemplates whether Cletus managed to find a way to overcome the profound impact of the tragic crime that forever altered his life. The unanswered questions surrounding Cletus's journey haunt the narrator's thoughts, leaving a lingering sense of remorse and a yearning to know if his friend was able to find solace and healing in the aftermath of such profound loss. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.